All right, guys, so I found this t Twitter account that screenshots just crazy takes by fans. I'm sure many of you guys are aware of all the different college football discussion forums. Uh, Message Board Geniuses is the name, and I found uh, these different uh, screenshots from it, and I just thought I would react to some of them because they are rather insane. It's just different fan bases basically being completely homers. Let's get, let's uh, take a look at some of these. So we've got an LSU fan who says 10 and 2 is the floor with 12 and 0 the ceiling. We have a senior laden team now, but not next year. So you guys, I'm sure you guys are aware. Everyone thinks LSU, Brian Kelly, not a good fit. They're probably going seven and five. Well, this fan, 10 and two, the floor. So worst case, worst case scenario for LSU this year, according to this individual, who's I'm sure not biased. Uh, Ten and two is worst case. Absolutely, you know, New Year's Six Bowl LSU this year. Who are, is LSU even ranked at the start of the year? Worst case scenario is ten and two because apparently they have a senior laden team. I mean, Jane Daniels, he's a decent quarterback. I'm guessing he's the guy they're going to go with starting the transfer from Arizona State, but obviously facing an SEC schedule is definitely tougher than anything he faced last year. We've got, a, it looks like a Georgia fan. It says, Alabama is so dumb to <laughs> extend a declining asset. <laughs> and this Georgia fan <laughs> says, extending a declining asset. Not sure if that's so smart. I love that Nick Saban is referred to as a declining asset. Uh, but apparently, the Georgia fan thinks that uh, Alabama, you know, should should have uh, just let Nick Saban walk. He's getting too old. Let him walk. Uh, thank, thank goodness for the University of Texas, where they place academics over athletics, unlike Alabama. And it says, Bama needs something because they sure don't have academics. Are academics what colleges are supposed to offer ultimately? Wow, I bet they have the highest paid faculty in the USA. And we thought Aggie was a joke with Jimbo's guaranteed contract. Thank the good Lord for the University of Texas. So they're mad that Nick Saban got, what was it, $10.5 million in his new contract extension. We've got this US, oh, oh this is a great one, so... This is a realignment rumor from a from a fan, so I'm just gonna read this and, and we'll see how realistic this is. So apparently, this 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 person who has sources, I was told point blank by the head of Fox Sports in July that the Big Ten has zero interest in Oregon. The academic deficit can't be overcome. I think Stanford and Cal. Have a real shot if Stanford wants in. That doesn't even make sense. He says, I think Stanford and Cal have a... Oh, I, I assume he's thinking Stanford might not want to go to the Big Ten. Stanford gives the conference its top academic school overnight. And Cal competes for the second spot with a couple others. Michigan, USC in the Bay Area market. Other than Notre Dame, I think Stanford currently holds a key spot on what happens next. It either steps up or decides to go Ivy... And no longer compete at the top level. So we've got this inside source telling us Stanford is either headed to the Big Ten or an Ivy League to comp compete with Harvard is what they're saying. I don't know what it will decide. They can bring Cal along for the reason above for the historic rivalry. Washington certainly rates too, but its historic rivalry with Oregon doesn't help. I think we all know that Washington is a better fit to the Big Ten than Oregon is. That is true. A lot of people have been saying that at some point the Big Ten may cut may cut a few programs. Maryland and Rutgers never made sense and still don't. So we have loads of breaking news to report, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Oregon has is not joining the Big Ten. Zero interest. This is coming. This person was told point blank. By the head of Fox Sports, <laughs> that Oregon has no in there's there's no interest from the Big Ten in adding Oregon. They want Stanford in California, and apparently right now Stanford is deciding whether to go to the Big Ten or whether to go to the Ivy League. 
Maybe they bring California, maybe they don't. And Washington is being held down by their rivalry with Oregon, so they're not getting into the Big Ten. And we also may have the, the Big Ten cut out Maryland just say, you know what, you're not you're not a member anymore. Same thing with Rutgers because both of those don't make sense. So this is abs this is why, you know, this is why we do this stuff. We find stuff like this. Next, we've got a Notre Dame fan who makes a pretty good point here. And, and this is actually real. Um, this is about the idea of Notre Dame not joining a conference, the amount of money they would leave on the table. I find it funny you think Notre Dame won it. They are they are choosing to lose their money and market. Indiana will make 20 more than Notre Dame just in TV deals, which is basically true. So the rumor number Notre Dame got in terms of when they get a new TV deal after the 2024 season because their NBC TV deal expires in 2024, the rumor number they got is 60 million. You combine that with their current situation with the ACC. The ACC pays them $10 million every year because they're partnered with them, and I think they face four teams in the ACC. So it's about $70 million for Notre Dame. The Big Ten, every member of the Big Ten, including Indiana, including Rutgers, will be making over $100 million with the addition of USC and UCLA by the year 2026. Or 20, right around there, 2026, 2027. So this person, this is a Notre Dame fan who brings up the point um, it, it is the battle. So, uh, you know, you would think most Notre Dame fans would want to stay independent. They love that prestige of being independent. But this fan is saying, listen, it's stupid. We're just, we're, we're keeping our heads in the sand, losing so much money. And the comment does have 16 upvotes. So I thought that was interesting. Next, we have an FSU fan who is extremely concerned with this Duquesne game. So if you guys don't know, FSU faces Duquesne this week, the FCS school, and it says no open dates with Duquesne. The weather for Saturday isn't looking so good. We may be losing a win. It's not the rain, it's the lightning that is the problem. And yes, this time of year, the first few weeks, of, especially the first week, and this is week zero, you deal with lightning delays all the time. Uh, in these college football games. So this fan is very concerned that they're going to lose a win against Duquesne. We really need this win though. It doesn't seem like we could reschedule with the Dukes. I even checked other schools, but Miami has all cupcakes locked up. So they're trying to make sure they get this extra win to make a bowl game. It's so sad with Florida State. It really is. It, they've fallen so much. And now they're concerned their Duquesne game might get canceled. Um, but I don't know. How do, what do you mean there's no open dates? If they have a game week zero, don't they have two buys during the season? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they could just shuffle it around a little bit and get that Duquesne game in. Or play the Duquesne game, move it to Sunday. I think there's several things they could do to get that game in uh, and, and and make sure FSU finishes. I mean, I, I'm assuming they're worried about missing a bowl if they don't get to six wins. They need this game. This is a game, again, you know, they're going to win. They're 99% chance to win. I think they're like 40-point favorites. Next, we've got an Ohio State fan who basically thinks the Buckeyes are going to assemble the Avengers here. I mean, this is when you look at the overall numbers. So the offensive numbers are one thing. 2022 stat prediction, C.J. Stroud, 56 touchdowns. I could see that. Trevion Henderson, 23 total touchdowns. I mean, maybe. Mayan Williams, 7 rushing touchdowns. JSN, 17 receiving touchdowns. Marvin Harrison, 13 receiving touchdowns. Ameka, 10 touchdowns, including one kickoff return for a touchdown and one punt return. I like that. I love a Mecca Buka. Uh, Julian Fleming, 850 yards, seven touchdowns. But guys, the most, he also predicts two standing ovation. The most funny thing is the defensive stats. JTT, 12 sacks. Jack Sawyer, 10 and a half sacks. <laughs> Zach Harrison, nine and a half sacks. Uh, Michael Hall and Taron Vincent, five sacks each. Day wins Big Ten Coach of the Year. O-line wins Joe Moore, a line for best O-line unit. Strout takes home the Heisman. Scoreboard operator better warm up their hands early and often. <laughs> so, yeah, very funny. Obviously, you know, I, that's a lot to predict. I just thought it is, you know, 
Not saying it's likely to happen, especially on the defensive, but C.J. Stroud, certainly I could see 55 touchdowns, depending on if he plays the full 15 games. Uh, next we've got, this is a rogue rumor from a Kansas fan who, who says, from what I am hearing, the city of Los Angeles may not let USC go to the Big Ten. That is a rumor that is breaking right now on the Kansas Rivals board. This is a Rivals board, I can tell. Um, and there is a whole thing with UCLA maybe getting sued. I don't think it's going to... UCLA will be in the Big Ten. You know, I just thought that was funny. Next, we've got an on three forum page here, the Oregon page, and one of the users says, to be honest, I was done with Mario Cristobal. Uh, it, it says, if Mario was still the coach, I was done. I just don't like Mario's brand of football for from an enjoyment standpoint and wasn't going to renew my season tickets this year, but I found a renew interest in Oregon football after the spring game. So he is rejuvenated and he's ready for the Atlanta kickoff, their big game versus Georgia. I will say somebody did point this out about Mario Cristobal, who I think we all think is a pretty good coach at least. What did he do to Justin Herbert? If like Justin Herbert degressed to the point where people were saying he wasn't even a first round pick, and then he goes to the NFL, has one of the greatest rookie seasons ever, follows that up with an amazing sophomore season. What happened to that kid? under Mario Cristobal. Do you guys remember, I think it's called the Red Box Bowl or something. Justin Herbert, I vividly remember it was at Levi Stadium. Michigan State against Oregon. I don't remember who won, but I believe the final score was 7-6 to six and Justin Herbert was the quarterback for Oregon. That is, somebody was saying like, what did Mario Cristobal do to Justin Herbert? Like he regressed. And people were saying when he was drafted, I think six overall, that it was a dumb pick because of how bad he looked with Oregon as a, I think he stayed his senior season, like he came back. And yeah, just a weird situation. But obviously, this fan, I mean, they, they did, Oregon didn't choose to lose this coach. He left on his own to Miami and they had to replace him. And it's funny that this fan was saying, you know, we finally have success and he's done if Mauro Cristobal was still the coach. Next, we have, looks like a Texas AM fan. Nuclear bomb has been set. From my understanding, from someone directly involved with that program, yours, <laughs> yours has been an entitled lazy piece of shit that has the arm of a god but is way behind on the mental aspect of the game and has serious work ethic issues. He's not popular in the locker room at all and Hudson Card very much is. Everyone, and I mean everyone, Thought Carr was clearly better at this point in their careers. I am not going to say it is a fact, but it sure seems like the decision was made long ago and was completely out of Stark's hands. So that seems like a rogue rumor, but guys, you have, people have to understand something about Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers should be a true freshman right now. Quinn Ewers, Ryan Day told Quinn Ewers, don't come here early. You're going to mess up the whole QB timeline. Please don't do it. You're just going to end up transferring out. That's exactly what happened. Ewers wanted an NIL deal earlier. So he comes to Ohio State. He reclassifies and then plays two snaps and transfers out. And I would say, I would recommend this to any young quarterback who's thinking of skipping their senior season. Don't. Do not skip your senior season of high school. It is too important in terms of development. Not saying Quinn Ewers can't be great. And listen, this fan could have made this up. But I, quite honestly, I do think that Quinn Ewers was always going to be the starter for Texas. I think he's more talented than Hudson Card. Even if Hudson Card was going to have a better camp than Quinn Ewers, which people were saying, Ewers has so much more potential. You know you're getting him for the next two years. Get him as much reps as you possibly can. It does make sense in that form. But I think Quinn Ewers is a perfect case study if you are a quarterback, develop, play your senior season of high school. It's so important to not screw with your development, in my opinion. Next, we've got this Florida fan who says Miami 100% missed payments for at least for at least one recruit confirmed. So that comes to the NIL booster 
uh, payments. We all know Miami is participating in that. I would ask this Florida fan, what happened to Dijon Johnson? What is that situation? What a mess. So Dijon Johnson decommits from Ohio State. Everyone and their mom, this is a top 100 recruit. Everyone and their mom thinks he's going to Florida. Looks like he was about to commit to Florida. Then it looks like he's going to recommit to Ohio State. The moral of the story is he's still uncommitted. And we've got a Florida fan saying that Miami has missed NIL payments. I wouldn't like, was there an NIL deal set up with Dijon Johnson for Florida? Reportedly, that was the rumor. I don't know if it fell through. I just thought it was kind of ironic that a Florida fan was saying that considering what many people think happened to Dijon Johnson. Um, I don't know. We will see. Next, we have, it looks like a Penn State fan who says, so I reconnected with a friend from high school who was married and we started chatting. Her husband is rarely home and she asks permission to sleep with me. Apparently they've discussed this before and he gave the okay, but he wants pictures of the act. So I've rounded third, but I'm in a pickle because I'm not sure I'm cool with it. Of course, I, I picture this person as he's having sex, going on the Lions 247 message board. And like, what does that mean? I've rounded third. So you're you're right about to do it? <laughs> and he want, apparently the dude wants pictures. Uh, is this real? Probably not, but it is hilarious. Next, we've got a USC 247 fan saying that Malachi Nelson is gone. And apparent, this is this is what I said. This is exactly what I said about the Texas A&M visit for Malachi Nelson. If you guys don't know, Malachi Nelson is a superstar top 10 overall recruit in the 2023 class. He committed to Oklahoma because of Lincoln Riley. He decommits from Oklahoma because of Lincoln Riley and commits to USC because of Lincoln Riley. But now he takes a visit to Texas A&M. And this fan says... Malachi was offered $15 million over three years. Let that sink in. This stuff is true, and it is truly a Wild West. And the Texas oil men are flexing their wallets. So, yeah, I'm guessing this is just completely made up. Uh, but realistically, I would pay money to have Malachi Nelson answer honestly what happened during that A&M visit. Did they approach him with a number? Did they say... You know, something about a potential deal where it's like a, a multi-year contract because that's the new thing with the NIL quarterbacks. Jaden Rashada getting $9 million. The Tennessee QB getting $8 million. Uh, and then Malachi Nelson, how much would Texas A&M really pay for this kid? Uh, I would say maybe $10 million. I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. But uh, obviously, I'm, I'm guessing this rumor is fake of... But that is the last screenshot I have saved. So just a funny thing, message board geniuses, they, I think they take you know, screenshots from people that submit it to them and they post them on their Twitter account. So shout out to them. That's where I got this content from. And you can follow them on Twitter. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.